As we mentioned, President Obama's on the road again trying to sell his jobs plan and taking aim at the Republican ideas in the process. For more on the president's plan, let's bring in Douglas Holtaken, president of the American Action Forum and former CBO director under President George W. Bush. He was also economic advisor to Senator John McCain's 2008 presidential campaign, and he joins us from Washington. Doug, welcome back to Bottom Line. Always a pleasure to have you on. Thanks for having me. Uh, Doug, the president's jobs bill, we know now that it's not going to be voted on as one piece of legislation. Congress is splintering it into pieces with the Senate this week ready to take up parts of the bill. Which parts have bipartisan support? Well, we know that historically uh, Republicans have supported a uh, payroll tax holiday. Uh, we know that they have ex uh, been supportive of uh, some of the infrastructure spending. I think the big issue is going to be uh, how big, how fast, and in particular with the infrastructure, to what extent do we really believe these jobs will, will be created quickly? Uh, if not the president's plan, then how do you get to what the University of Texas economics professor James Galbraith called the requirements for a real economic policy? How do you get money to the private economy? Well, I think one of the easy ways to get money in the private economy is to actually uh, cut the tax on repatriated foreign earnings. We have uh, about a trillion and a half American dollars trapped offshore because we have the last corporate tax code that taxes on the basis of worldwide income. Uh, we should probably fix that now and permanently, but if we can't do that, there's bipartisan support for a reduced tax rate on those repatriations. My own estimates are you could get $800 billion back and uh, really have a big impact on GDP growth, maybe $360 billion over the next couple of years. Big impact on jobs, you know, over 2 million jobs. Doug, Doug with the unemployment rate, speaking of jobs, still stuck above 9%. And with Republicans in Congress adamant about holding the line on spending, will increasing America's exports perhaps be one of the engines that drives the economy and job creation going forward? The president, as you know, has a goal of doubling the nation's exports in four years. Uh, it would be wonderful if we were aggressive about improving our competitiveness, uh, if we were aggressive about uh, launching new trade deals in addition to the, the three that we've heard so much about. But the reality is that there's too much of the world that's using an export-led growth strategy. Uh, we've seen it from China, from Europe, from Japan, and not all countries can export simultaneously. So we do have to be competitive internationally. We do have to have some trade agreements, but we also have to take care of business at home and really get a better mm -hmm. environment for long-term growth. Uh, Doug, when you spoke to my colleague Tom Keene last week, you said of getting our economic house in order, quoting here, we need to make some permanent changes and be ruthlessly pro growth as we do it. With the White House and congressional Republicans at odds over exactly how to do that, where does that leave the public? Well, at the moment, uh, we're uh, stuck at a standstill, and I think that's a great shame. Uh, we do need to make some permanent changes in our tax code, in our entitlement spending, in our approach to regulatory approval. Many of those things would make a big difference in economic growth, but uh, at the moment, we cannot seem to get all of the parties in Washington on one page. Well, uh, the Occupy Wall Street movement, it's now a month old and it is now global. One person who took part in the protest in Orlando this weekend told the Associated Press, quoting here, I don't think the underlying theme is a mystery. We saw what the banks and financial institutions did to the economy. We bailed them out and then they went about evicting people from their homes. How do you define economic fairness and should protesters aim their anger towards Washington instead of Wall Street? I think there's a, a fair amount of discontent at the pace of economic growth. We've seen a lot of people be out of work for years, and at the moment they don't have a particular hope of going back soon. And so that's got to be the focus. Past that, whether you are concerned about just the state of the least well-off Americans or if you also care about the gap between them and more affluent Americans, the bottom line is that we need to do a better job of educating our young so that they are competitive in global markets. We need to do a better job of having training programs that actually get people who lose a job back to a job quickly. And we haven't done the kinds of work in those areas that we really need, and it's overdue that we get on it. Douglas Holzaken, president of the American Action Forum, joining us from Washington. Doug, it's always a pleasure to have you on. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mark.